Hi all, let's look at another fantastic game from the Legends of Chess tournament, which is a tournament part of the Magnus Carlsen tour. So here, Magnus Carlsen was white against the very fierce and dangerous Ian Nepomniachtchi. So d4 was chosen by Magnus. We have knight f6, knight f3, g6, and Magnus chooses here bishop f4. So this is going into a kind of London system, not entertaining c4. So maybe this already created some sort of sinking feeling for Nephew and Archie. I expect he's, he seems a more dynamic tactical player. So Magnus is trying to perhaps steer the position into a very, very calm, solid territory for White, where provocation uh, could be a key thing. And here we see actually a little bit of provocation, Bishop e2. This does permit Knight h5. If White wanted to, White could have played here h3 just to be able to dissuade knight h5 because of bishop h2. But here it seems as though there's some bait being set up with this move to encourage knight h5. Uh, we have d6 for the moment. And again, White doesn't play h3, but rather just castles. We have knight h5 now, bishop g5, and it looks microscopic, like micro downsides h6 but the light squares are being slightly weakened here with this provocation so bishop h4 and again you can see you know the micro downsides accumulating that the light squares are being weakened you might not think this is particularly uh, dangerous uh, here a key move knight fd2 is played so not really permitting uh, bishop g3 knight takes so easily uh, basically saying if g takes now, bishop takes h5. But this has been played before. g takes has been played before. Also, knight f4 is plausible. I'll just show you uh, the game for a moment move was knight f6 going back. And it's sort of mission accomplished when the bishop went back. The light squares have been slightly weakened. If we look here, it's instead g takes, bishop takes. This has been seen before. And it should lead to a position which, in theory, is about even. You can see this aggressive use of this pawn could fragment potentially white's pawns. It should be uh, some even chances on that line. G takes h4. It's not as terrible as it might seem. But also, you know, knight f4 here is not that terrible either. It seems uh, if bishop takes if bishop g3 here, then knight takes e2. You know, getting the light square bishop might actually mean this is less punitive. You know, there's no light square bishop to punish these light square weaknesses. And uh, if instead, you know, bishop g3, e takes, g takes, we have a situation which is interesting to consider. It can't be ruled out just because of the shattered pawn set. Black, you know, has, has some dynamic play. So anyway, in the event of the game, the knight just retreated back. And after bishop g3, I had a bad feeling already <laughs> about black's position instinctively. I just felt this pawn is also, if you think about it, it is a lever for f4 at some point. Generally, you don't want to play f4 because of this diagonal, but if we look at this particular position, how exploitable is this diagonal? The bishop's being chateaued here. So maybe f4 is a lever to put pressure on the f file later. We see the move knight c6. Bishop f5 is interesting. Uh -uh, pardon me, to consider, to try and cover up the light square weaknesses. But you know, it's putting a responsibility on the pieces to look after the pawns, which can't go backwards. And for example, this situation, it should give white a small edge, actually. Perhaps white can play f4 here. And you can see this this free lever to make use of is a bit of fun here, um, potentially. You know, for example, like this, white has a small edge. So anyway, we see uh, knight c6 in this position, not bishop f5. Now. Curiously, knight c3, this seems a little bit more aggressive than c3. c3 doesn't seem to fit, really. The knight is quite passive on d2. So knight c3 at least gives one of the knights the third rank to play with some key central squares immediately, like d5. If we look at c3 just concretely, black with e5, h3, this, this position, it should be fairly... Okay, it's fairly technically even anyway. So knight c3, and then we have e5 here. 
so it's a very curious position. You wouldn't have thought necessarily this had come from the London system to start off with, but the London system triangle hadn't been completed. So we have a very interesting position. Now D takes, Knight takes E5. This is a bit provocative actually for this lever to be used with tempo, this F4. But F4, doesn't it look like a ghastly move in some respects to play F4 here? Would you really play F4? Because E3 seems quite weak. But this is exactly what Magnus played. And now knight eg4, and it seems as though, hold on a sec, how awkward is this to defend e3? Magnus actually plays rook f3 here. This does seem as though, isn't this suspect? You would think this is suspect in some way. Can't really have this structure, can, can you, with white? If knight c4, the trouble is d5, but there might be f5 here, believe it or not, cutting off that bishop from g4. And this position might actually be even. Uh, so that's very interesting as well. Knight c4 might actually be playable. Another aspect of this on f5 um, is uh, b5. I'm trying to really nudge this uh, knight. And this variation is interesting to consider. But again, it ends up about even. So very, very interesting. But the awkward looking move, rook f3, how concretely can this be punished? It does seem rather strange. This seems very logical, rook e8. If knight h5 here, the bishop can, it seems, drop back to e1. And this kind of scenario, it seems as though white should be rearranging things and B slightly okay, slightly better. So rook e8 is played, and we have knight f1 here. And now, in this critical moment, you know, it seems white's provocation leads to this move knight h5. This might be a mistake, believe it or not. There is a kind of tactical liability around these knights. It seems knight h7 to create the parking space f6 for this knight to retreat back to maybe what black should have been content with. So for example, h3, go back to that parking space. And we see here on d5 here that black is underlining the kind of backwardness of this pawn. This is logical positional play against this backward pawn on the Soviet file. And according to engines at least, black has a slight advantage. But remember, this isn't a world championship or you know long time show. This is just a rapid game, so some risks are being taken here from both sides, especially from Magnus. It seems here. Uh, so anyway, Black didn't play knight h7, so he played knight h5, and we do get elements of tactical liability creeping in. It seems after bishop e1. Strange as it may seem, but you know, for example, white, if white had another move or two, oh, I don't know what I did there. <laughs> As I was saying, <laughs> blimey. If white had another move or two, h3 here, and then, you know, you can see that g4 is, is painful. So these knights are, you know, potentially tactically, uh, that they are a liability, and this is balanced against this seemingly lame pawn on e3 in this position. So it it is like a really fascinating position. And here is another kind of mistake, f5. Now, the micro downsides were related to the light squares, and it's easy, it's easy once you weaken some light squares, it spreads like a virus potentially. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe that's not an appropriate thing to say in the current times. <laughs> but these light square virus, no, light square weaknesses, not light square virus, light square weaknesses are pretty fatal here after f5, actually. This is, this is significantly in white's favour now already at move 16 after f5. Before we get into f5, the problem is already, you know, c6, there's trouble with h3, and then actually here, even stronger than g4, might be f takes first, and then actually just even not even using the pawns, not even weakening the king, just exposing the power of this battery against h5 
What does what does Black do about the H five night? It does seem like a disastrous, you know, provocation scenario that has been, you know, is occurring. Is is the outcome? So G takes F four instead. This might have been the only way for Black to play the position here. Queen E seven, and if H three, Bishop takes C three. I know that seems a weird thing to do. To get, you don't really want to give up your Fianchetto bishop, but here it might be justified to win e2. <clears throat> but the thing is, after queen d4, so this threatens checkmate on h8. Knight g f6, knight g3. You can see there's big trouble if knight takes rook takes. <clears throat> Pardon me. And if c5, queen takes d6, this gets awfully bad. This position is not pleasant. You've got a real targeting practice for black's king it seems in many of the variations coming up white's got a big advantage there uh, but let's go back instead of queen e7 queen f6 h3 queen d4 here queen takes rook takes bishop takes rook takes rook takes hg bishop takes and black would actually have a big advantage. So that's fascinating. There is fascinating stuff here going on after Queen F6. So instead of H3, it might rule out H3. In fact, White would maybe have to play King H1. And we have Queen D4, Rook D3, Queen takes F4, Knight D5, Queen G5, H3. And this is troublesome for Black. If rook takes here, this position, it ends up white's better. It's very, very complex tactical stuff, really, isn't it? This, this stuff. You know what? What is going on here? This, this gambit. This, this is really all a bit unexpected. So yeah, queen f6. It turns out here that h3 might not be uh, great. So king h1 apparently. It's it's very, very tactical scenarios. Yeah, I I guess you know the knights they do have tactical potential. As this shows, if White had to play like this behind the scenes, but anyway, as it turned out, this f5 it exacerbates the light square issues significantly. Mangus plays basically a killer move. Can you guess what it is? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, okay. Bishop c4 check. The snag is um, if the king moves to h8 or h7 there's bishop f7 i'll just put that on the board if king h7 bishop f7 really targets that loose piece loose pieces tend to fall off as the expression goes i think it was coined originally by well john nunn mentioned it in one of his quotes but yeah the h5 knight if it you know has to be sacrificed i mean or or lose the exchange but even if it went back in and bishop takes there's still h3 and where, where is that knight going back or, or you know there, there's various combinations of things which just win further ma material anyway so we have this you know if 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 this scenario it's 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 just losing um and so on king h8 again you know we we just play bishop f7 here so it seems as though the remarkable you know london system style just weakening light squares has has massively paid dividends black's really um exacerbated it so bishop e6 is played and there's a transformation of the position which is rather remarkable here Magnus takes on e6 so the light square guardian is gone that's a great way of magnifying your opponent's weaknesses on a certain color get rid of their color guardian you know the, the bishop of that color that's one of the key things and now it's tempting very very tempting to play queen d5 but Magnus didn't he played actually maybe an even stronger simpler move h3 if he played uh, queen d5, queen e8, this this is possible. White's getting uh, an advantage here, but maybe the queen, you know, it doesn't really feel right on b3. It's away from the action, but you know, it is possible technically. But the way Magnus plays it is queen's not like stranded at all, in an intuitive sense, you know. So he kicks this knight back, and you know, this queen is very nice actually on d1. It's it's in touch with the center from d1 and other possibilities and he just takes on f5 
And now, you know, there's big ideas like g4 to just win that knight. We have bishop h6, and this is this looks positionally as if has you know has has black started from a fish random position or something. What, what is the bishop doing on h6 here? So you know, g4. This is this is just cementing white's lock on the light squares. I mean, the bishop had to vacate a parking space for, for the knight. So the knight goes back. Rook f3. We have queen d7, and now knight g3. So this knight's now pretty amazing, controlling some light squares. There's a light square lock down. Rook a e8. Bishop f2. <laughs> I'm sorry for my vocabulary lockdown. I don't know where these words come from. Queen c6. Okay, so queen c6, e4. Yeah, okay. This uh, pressing down on these squares, um, containing these squares, it carries on. So we have knight d7 here, which is a disaster of the last move, actually. It was guarding d5. So that's a disaster as well about to occur to make white's position even more impressive. If um, the the thing is, yeah, white is in a, a great position here. It can play knight d5 anyway, one, one would expect. Uh, because any taking is knight f6. I'll give you a sample of what I mean. Say a token move. Say this happens. If takes here, there, you know, knight f6 would win a rook there. So knight d5 seems like a big idea anyway. So maybe if uh, instead of knight d7 like the game, if knight h7 again, you know, knight d5. And this position, it's it's a really dominating position. The knights both look at f5. And just to take this through as, as a scenario, this is just gigantic positional play at work where this bishop's really cut out of the game. And white could just press through soon with e5 in this scenario. So anyway, we have this knight d7. It releases that d5 totally. The thing is now, knight d5, white's threatening things like rook c3, rook c3 rather, to hit the queen to win c7. In fact, c7 seems rather awkward here. Black actually had enough of his position and just resigned here. So, uh, yeah, if king h7, you know, rook c3 and rook takes c7, it's going to be a big advantage, as an example. If queen b5, just take with a knight on c7. If knight e5, rook c3, again, we're just taking the knight on c7. If a5, rook c3, knight c5. Okay, there's a3 here, and black's not doing anything. This bishop is just basically dead in this position, isn't it? So, you know, if black tries to suppress b4, it still seems, you know, white's getting a huge, you know, position. It's going to be winning material in slow motion here. It's not, it's nothing really black can do here because of these threats. Yeah, so this is, this is pathetic, isn't it, for black, this position. And remarkable. You know that the provocation strategy uh, on the light squares really resulted in a disaster. I remember playing Blitz against, uh, I think I am Nicholas, I am Richard Pert, the, the Pert brothers, and and I remember a similar provocation strategy with the bishop. I lost rather quickly on the light squares. I know the feeling of of these provocative bishop movements to provoke you to weaken your light squares slightly, and then when you do play f5. Uh, you can usually resign soon after, basically. That's the general pattern. You shouldn't, in general, it's dangerous to move the f-pawn because, of, you know, it's the weakness of the, the diagonal of death, as I call it. When you move your f-pawn, the diagonal of death. But, yeah, if there's already existing light square weaknesses, you're kind of exacerbating, you know, f5 sometimes like this game demonstrated. But, it, of course, it all depends on the position. But, yeah, it's it shows the London system with knight c3, a kind of, Almost started as London, but with knight c3, has got a little bit of bite in its own right. I did think it was very unique and peculiar the whole arrangement of the knights, like on g4 and h5, and this awkwardness around e3. It did seem rather strange to me. What did you guys think? Yeah, please leave your comments and questions. And uh, yeah, let's have a good discussion. Okay, if you want to challenge me for a game, on Chessworld, uh, bit.ly slash Chessworld or kingscrusher.tv. I've got playlist bit.ly slash leader chess, bit.ly slash stockfish chess. 
there's a new stockfish nn come you know around so that should be very interesting for that stockfish playlist uh suave uh, chat at king's crusher tv slash discord if you want to join that okay comments questions like share subscribe with the notification bell always appreciated thanks very much